The Battle of Heaven and Earth is the most important battle in the entire Attack on Titan. This battle is between the combined forces of Warriors and Survey Corps against Eren and his army of colossal titans. As the flying boat travels towards Fort Solta, Armin notes that due to obtaining the Warhammer Titan, Eren may not be residing within the nape of the Founding Titan, and discusses with both the Warriors and Corps members about various means to incapacitate the Founding Titan. The meeting is interrupted as the group is being pulled into paths by Eren. As his comrades try to talk Eren down, Mikasa pleads for Eren to return to them. Seeing Eren in the distance, Armin, Mikasa, and the others try to reach him, but are unable to get any closer. Eren tells them that he has no intention of stopping. He proclaims that he will take all of the world's freedom so he can achieve his own, but he promises not to deny the Alliance's freedom to thwart his plans. However, Eren reinforces his intent to destroy the world, refusing to negotiate on any terms and stating that the only thing to stop his advance would be his death, before sending them back to the flying boat. The emotional Survey Corps realizes that they have no other option but to fight Eren. They arm themselves with vertical maneuvering equipment and explosives to detonate at the base of the Founding Titan's head. While leaving on the Azumabito boat, Falco and Gabby plead with Annie to let them help with the efforts to stop the rumbling. Due to ingesting Zeke's spinal fluid, Falco recalls memories of a former beast titan that was capable of flight and is confident he can do the same. After Kiyomi, Yelena, and the crew abandon ship, Falco does indeed generate an avian form of the Jaw Titan and flies in the direction of the Eren's founding Titan, with both Annie and Gabby riding atop his back. As both groups head towards a rendezvous, the Marleyan military has received numerous reports of the Wall Titans quickly overrunning the continent. As survivors and refugees begin to reach Fort Salta, War Secretary Mueller orders soldiers to drop explosives on the quickly approaching Titans. Unfortunately, the Founding Titan summons Zeke's Beast Titan form and shoots down the airships with projectiles and eliminates all of them, rendering the fort defenseless. As the flying boat approaches Eren, it is struck by several projectiles and one of the wings is destroyed. Armin orders the Beast Titan to be a top priority target, and as Onyan Capone maneuvers the damaged ship directly over the Founding Titan, both soldiers and warriors jump out of the ship as the final battle for humanity begins. The group notices that Zeke's Beast Titan dissolved soon after Reiner went to attack it, alerting them that Zeke was not inside it. As the others retreat so Armin can transform into the Colossus Titan, he is captured by another Titan resembling an Okapi. Many more Titans begin to spawn on atop the Founding Titan's back, reacting with hostility and driving the soldiers back. Peek realizes that the Titans they are facing are resurrected versions of the Nine Titans from over the last 2,000 years. Realizing that Eren can generate an infinite number of Titans, Peek tries to rush to his nape on her own and use the explosives to kill him. She manages to set the explosives around his nape, but before she can set them off, her Titan gets impaled by Laura Tiber's Warhammer Titan. Before the group can make any progress, Bertholdt's Colossus Titan appears and grabs Reiner. It attempts to devour him, but Reiner is rescued from his Titan's nape by Jean at the last second. The Colossus Titan throws Reiner's Titan at the group, and the impact knocks them all the way from Eren's Titan. Reiner and Jean's maneuvering equipment are busted, and they are left stranded, hanging 400 meters above the ground. Reiner tries to convince Jean to let him go so he can transform again, but Jean points out that he will only be crushed by the Colossus Titans beneath Eren. As the nine titans of the past begin to attack, the group is rescued by the arrival of Falco, who has learned to fly with his jaw titan. As they approach Fort Salta, the soldiers try to come up with their next move. Gabby reveals that when Eren's founding titan spawned in Shigashina, a large centipede creature erupted from his body that reconnected his neck and believes that it could happen if the head and neck are separated once again. Leva decides to stay aboard the jaw titan due to his injuries and provide support with Gabby, while the others return to the founding titan and split into two teams. Mikasa, Connie, and Annie will track down the titan that took our men, while Jean and Reiner travel towards the head and nape where the explosives are. Everyone agrees, and Falco flies towards Eren. He avoids a barrage of arrows shot at them from the various Warhammer Titans, and after depositing both teams, continues circling around the Founding Titans so Gabby can disable the Titans with her rifle. Reiner gets overrun by the numerous Warhammer Titans and is repeatedly shot and stabbed with arrows and pikes generated by them. Having been pinned down near the nape of the Founding Titan, Peek emerges from the Cart Titan and begins to transform and tear apart numerous Titans nearby repeatedly. Meanwhile, the other team spots the Okapi Titan that kidnapped Armin, and Mikasa signals Annie to throw her towards it. Despite this, more Titans spawn and corner Mikasa while keeping her and the others away from the Okapi Titan. Inside the Titan's mouth, Armin begins to suffocate. He concludes that Emir is the one generating Titans to defend Eren and begins to lament that he and his comrades are powerless to stop the two of them. As he begins to pass out, Armin sees Berthold Hoover standing before him, crying. 
Armin stares down at his unconscious body and grows frustrated that it will not move, thinking that he is dead, as he remembers his friends. He begins insulting himself, lamenting that all he ever does is let himself and others down. As he angrily proclaims that he has wasted the second chance at life he was given, Armin realizes that he is surrounded by sand. Seeing the sand, Armin realizes that the fact that he can still see and think means that he is still alive. Realizing he is in the paths again, Armin thinks that he might be able to continue helping his friends through the connections all Eldians have in paths. However, his thinking is almost immediately derailed when he sees Zeke Jaeger sitting nearby. He introduces himself to Zeke, and Zeke asks Armin if Emir has consumed him. Armin sits with Zeke and listens as Zeke explains his theory about the origin of life. Zeke theorizes that all life forms find their meaning by multiplying, and that it was a resultant fear of death that caused Ymir to spawn her undying titan body and escape to the world of the paths. Zeke theorizes that the reason she continued to obey the Fritz family for 2,000 years was because she still felt a connection to the world and that she likely chose to help Eren because he was the first person able to understand her. Armin's tries to get Zeke to tell him how to escape the path world, but Zeke believes there is no point in continuing to fight. Seeing a leaf stuck in the soil, Armin recalls a time in his youth when he raced Eren and Mikasa to the top of a hill outside Shigashina. Recounting the memory to Zeke, Armin claims that at that moment he had felt that the only reason he had been born was to try to race his friends. He had felt that same way reading as a child, feeding small animals, and shopping with his friends. Showing Zeke the leaf from the soil, Armin claims that even though he does not need it to live, it is still precious to him. He hands Zeke the leaf and is shocked to see the human forms of many past Titan inheritors standing behind him. As Zeke wakes up the inheritors, Armin notices Emir Fritz watching them from the distance before turning to see Bertholdt. Acknowledging his role in Bertholdt's death, Armin asks his former ally to help him. At the same time, Zeke thanks Grisha and Tom for everything and asks them to lend him their strength. All of a sudden, many of the spawned titans begin to turn against each other and provide support for the beleaguered soldiers. Bertholdt saves Annie, who was overrun by titans. Marcel and Porco jump in to save Jean and peek, while Amir in her jaw titan form manages to save Reiner just in time. Levi notices the Okapi titan and instructs Gabby to shoot it in the head. Mikasa also rushes towards the titan and slices apart its jaws to free Armin. As the number of titan shifters fight among each other, Zeke emerges from the founding titan and calls out to Levi. He remarks about how life truly is worth living and that he was stupid not to notice it before. Levi flies over and swiftly decapitates him before returning back to the Jaw Titan. This causes all of the rumbling to stop. Jean rushes towards the Founding Titan's head before detonating the explosives, calling him stupid little suicidal blockhead. This blows off the head of the Founding Titan, and as it falls towards the ground, the centipede creature does indeed emerge to try and reconnect it. Reiner starts to wrestle with the centipede in an attempt to keep it away from Eren's head, informed that Armin will try to destroy Eren by transforming into the Colossus Titan. Jean rendezvous with Peek, and they retreat to the Jaw Titan with the others as Falco flies back to Fort Salta. Armin is held in the hands of Tom's Beast Titan and Berthold's Colossus Titan, thanking their predecessors for helping them achieve their goal. He transforms and blows apart the rest of the Founding Titan's body with a massive explosion. The Survey Corps and warriors fly back to Fort Salta, and as Falco lands, the warriors reunite with their loved ones. The Survey Corps can't believe they were actually able to achieve the impossible and stop the rumbling. Armin's Colossus Titan emerges from the crater unharmed, while Reiner's armored Titan slowly gets up nearby. Due to the mass amounts of steam covering the area, they believe Eren was killed and make their way to Fort Salta as well. Just then, a large flash comes from the crater and Eren emerges in a Titan body similar in appearance and size to the Colossus Titan. Armin confronts him and begins to fight his former friend. At the same time, Reiner notices the source also survived and it begins to billow a gas that floats towards the fort. The inhabitants in Fort Salta notice this as well, and Connie notes that the gas is similar to the one expelled in Ragako that turned the village into Titans. Realizing what is about to happen, Levi quickly orders Mikasa and Peek to get back aboard Falco with him and depart. As they watch their companions depart, Jean muses that he and Connie are going to have to entrust their allies to finish the job for them. As they are about to transform, Connie jokes that it is Jean's fault that they are burdened with the job of saving the world, since he was the one who convinced them to join the Survey Corps. Soon after, they, Gabby, and all the other Eldians are transformed into Titans and quickly rush toward the centipede to save it from Reiner. Annie and Peek immediately transform to help Reiner, but all three are quickly overwhelmed by the swarm of Titans. Ignoring the Horde, Armin attempts to grapple Eren, declaring that he will fight him until the very end. He is swiftly disadvantaged when Eren lands a devastating blow against his own head, caving Armin's Titan's face in. As Levi and Mikasa come closer to Eren, Mikasa experiences another strong headache and is suddenly brought into the paths by Eren. She finds herself in the alternate reality where she is living in isolation with Eren following their decision to run away from the Paradis Marleyan conflict. 
Eren notices that Mikasa has been crying, and Mikasa wonders if it is okay for her to be there. Eren muses that the only option they had was to run away and live out the rest of his four years in peace together, since he could not bring himself to rumble the people living outside the walls. Mikasa apologizes for bringing up the past, and Eren asks her to forget about him when he dies. Mikasa wakes up in the real world and says that she cannot forget him. Tying her scarf around her neck once again, Mikasa tells Levi that Eren is inside his titan's mouth and asks him to help her reach him. Levi fires a thunder spear that blows apart some of the teeth in the titan's mouth big enough for Mikasa to get through. She sees Eren's head and spine and is momentarily taken aback when Eren looks towards her and acknowledges her presence. Mikasa recovers and vows to always remember Eren. She then severs his head and kisses Eren goodbye as Emir looks on. Once Eren is killed by Mikasa, Emir Fritz is freed, and the power of the Titans disappears. The surviving Titans also turn back to their human forms, but are quickly confronted by those of the Marlian military. Both sides learn that the Titans are no more due to the death of Eren Jaeger, which Armin claims responsibility for. Three years after the Battle of Heaven and Earth, the survivors of the battle embark on Paradis as ambassadors for Marley to begin peace negotiations with the island leaders. As they sail for the island, they read a letter from Historia, which explains that the remaining Jaegerists have formed an army to defend Paradis from the threat of the outside world. Click on this video where we covered 40 small details you didn't know about Eren Jaeger. Trust me, it's a must watch.